tell me about the worst date you've ever been on. It's date number five, he offers to make dinner. And I'm thinking that things are going pretty well. We're talking every single day. I'm even thinking tonight might be the night. You know what I mean? Like shower, shave, all that good stuff. Date number five, that had to be a record. They don't usually wait that long. I'm almost ready to leave. He texts me asking if there's anything special that I want to drink. He's picking up some champagne and I'm like, oh, you fancy. But then he texts me asking if I can bring my camera, my nice camera. What? Um, why? It's not what you're thinking. Um, no, then he proceeds to say, well, I'm trying out for the bachelorette and I want to have some professional photos. What? <laughs> oh my God, you're so funny. Get in my car head to his place. I get out of the car, he greets me, gives me a big kiss, he's got a bouquet of flowers. We start walking to the front door and then he goes, but wait, where's your camera? Turns out he was not kidding. Boy really did want to try out for The Bachelorette and even made it on the show, but I turned right back around into my car and went home. That was not a date. In her mind, it was a date. But in his mind, he was getting a photographer. It seems like the guy just wanted to be on TV. And sometimes that's what happens when you chase guys who might be out of your league. The only part that seemed strange to me was the fact that this was not the first date. So I'm regularly asked, why am I single? And what am I looking for in a man that seems to be hard to find? Well, of course I'm looking for someone equally successful and tall and handsome, but the things that seem to be more difficult to find are things like consistency. If you're successful, you got money, then that's good for you. But that's not what's going to help you get a man because that's not what we go by. We don't care about your success. We don't care about your money. I need a guy to be consistent, to call me regularly, text me regularly, to let me know that you're trying to get to know me and that you like me. But on the other hand, I don't need you to call me too much. That feels a little desperate. It's kind of like them if you do, them if you don't, because if you do exactly what she said, she's still gonna lose interest in you. I mean, at this age, she's single for a reason. And I need you to understand that I might not call you that often. I want you to take the lead. I might not be so great at timely responding to your voicemail or your text messages, because I'm actually, frankly, kind of very busy. And depending on the time, it might get caught up. But I also need a guy that's dependable, a guy that does what he says he's going to do and is there when he says he's going to be there. But I need him to understand that I might be five or 15 minutes late or that I might need to reschedule, that I might have double booked my calendar. And with that, the third thing is that I need you to be very understanding. I'm a self-admitted workaholic and sometimes I might need to reschedule. Um, I get it. She's going to be busy. But what about the guy? Isn't he going to be busy himself? Basically, she wants a guy who's going to chase her, a guy who's going to be dependable when she's not going to be dependable herself. What exactly is that guy going to get in return? Um, I might call you. I might have overbooked or I might be working late and I need you to be understanding. But then I have to admit that if it's early on in our relationship and you've rescheduled me, a few too many times, then we're probably done. So when I really think about it all, I kind of got a little bit of a double standard. I mean, sorry, I'm a work in progress. There it is right there. This is the reason why she's still single. She's very selfish. But it might explain why I'm single.